Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. They are not suing for money, they're doing it for change. A lawsuit filed on behalf of 20 Oxford High School students says the district is violating their right to a safe learning environment. That lawsuit now asking a judge to force Oxford Community Schools to make some changes to procedures and other safety protocols. Comes amid a slew of other lawsuits that we've seen filed by families of the victims. Priya Man live with us now. Priya, you've been going through the paperwork on this lawsuit. It is different from the others we've seen. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Devin. I think the biggest difference here is the goal is creating systemic policy changes, something these families have little to no faith that the district will do. Here's an earlier draft of that federal lawsuit, which was just filed moments ago. Putting our children's names in a federal lawsuit right. is a desperate attempt. It's a desperate attempt to be heard. 20 Oxford High School students are now listed as plaintiffs in a federal lawsuit. More than six months after the deadly school shooting, these families turning to the courts after they say the district failed them. There's so many things that could have stopped that day from happening. And then they continue to make these ridiculous decisions that makes us lose all faith, trust in them and, and wonder who did we elect and allow to be in charge of our schools? The families are not looking for a financial settlement, but want the courts to intervene and force an independent third party investigation. Not once, but three times the school board rejected the AG's offer, which makes me want now wonder why are they working so hard to avoid the attorney general's help? They also want significant policy changes. There have to be better policies uh, in the schools and those policies that allow a suicidal child like that in a mental health crisis to go back to their, to be sent back to the classroom with their backpack not being checked, that's a real issue. We can't work as a team with the school as it stands right now. Um, so filing this lawsuit, it's a desperate attempt. Parents also highlighted several incidents that happened since that deadly school shooting in November that they say leads to just a lack of accountability and transparency. We did reach out multiple times to officials within the Oxford School District, but did not hear back. Reporting live tonight, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4 News. It's, it's interesting. They're also looking for other policy changes here, Priya. Yeah, that's right, Devin. There's a ton here, but some of those policy changes include ending the practice of concealing and minimizing threats, stop returning students to class when there's no uh, disciplinary issue there, and more training for risk and threat assessments. That's just some of the policy yeah. changes they're now hoping a federal judge will implement. Send it back to you. All right, Priya. Our other top story here at 5, a deadly crash brings the morning commute to a standstill in Plymouth. 37-year-old woman was killed after she slammed into the back of a semi on M14 near Beck Road, right near the exit there. Tim Pamplin was there today as police tried to figure out what happened. The Volkswagen Passat that that 37-year-old woman was driving now on the back of a flatbed as the scene here starts to clear up. Uh, as you say, a 37-year-old lady wasn't wearing a seatbelt traveling at a high rate of speed and plowed into the back of a semi. Go up to Sky 4 here so you can see the scene. This all happened uh, during the morning rush hour about 8.30 this morning on eastbound M14 near Beck Road. Michigan State Police tell us vehicles were slowing down or stopped as they were approaching a construction zone when the driver of this uh, Volkswagen plowed into several vehicles, ultimately ending up pinned under that semi. The freeway was closed the entire morning, finally reopening shortly after the lunch hour. So to recap, a 37-year-old lady killed this morning. She drove at high speed into the back of a semi and she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. That was the scene along M14 this afternoon. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. All right, Tim, let's turn our attention to the weather. We take a live look outside from our new Cadillac Tower Skycam uh, in downtown Detroit. And this weekend is off to a really nice start, especially after baking for a good part of the week. You're going <laughs> to love what's coming for the rest of this Father's Day weekend. Gorgeous shot out there. Let's go ahead and get over to Brett Collar for an update. Hey, Brett. Looking nice, but a bit windy. You know, we heard it there in uh, the live shot in downtown. There's still some gusty winds, at least for now. A live look in Ann Arbor looking great, but notice those gusts over 25, even 30 miles per hour. Those winds, though, should relax tonight and tomorrow, setting the stage for what should be a great start to the weekend. Uh, skies are mainly clear this evening, but with the dry air in place, notice how quickly numbers fall. We're already in the 60s 
by midnight. The weekend shaping up to be pretty nice for most of us, but it is going to be a cooler weekend. 70s both days, which is below normal. Now, yes, there is a slight chance for rain late Sunday, but I think most of us are going to be okay. We'll talk more about the timing of that rain and also the 90s are set to return. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Brett, now to a wild scene in Southfield after a driver ends up hitting several houses. It happened in a neighborhood not far from 10 Mile and Southfield Road. Grant Herms reports neighbors rushed outside to help the driver. Investigators believe that driver was potentially involved in another accident here at Southfield Road and Alta Vista before heading down Alta Vista towards Continental, making for a very scary morning for neighbors. It sounded like a garbage truck, and I really thought it was the garbage truck coming, but I realized today is not Wednesday and it's Friday. Neighbors waking to the sounds and sights of a car driven by an older man that hit two houses along Continental in Southfield. Ran over there, tried to help get him out. By the time I got over there, he was already like getting him out of the car. Valerie Bryant was in her home when the car came careening across the lawn, hitting her neighbor's home first, then hers. Just hit was like, bam, like hard. And then the thing hit again, bam, the second time, that's when it hit our house. And that impact had the smoke when I came outside, like what in the world was that? He said that he think the brakes went out on his car. Rescue crews did take that driver to the hospital and then got to work on making sure these homes didn't collapse. Support beams up within minutes. All of these guys are highly skilled in what they do and they're stabilizing it right now so that that, that corner there does not fall. That's what the training's for. The technical rescue team in Southfield, we handle uh, building collapse, trench collapse, uh, confined space, rope rescue, water rescue, whatever happens. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. Luck happens sometimes. Very fortunate there weren't any kids out. Uh, nobody in the house was, was injured, so uh, that's the best part. And again, that driver was taken to Providence Hospital. Last check, the chief said he is stable. In Southfield, Grant Herms, Local 4. All right, Grant, three people shot and killed at an Alabama church Thursday night. Police say the suspect in the case is a 71-year-old man. They say he was attending a dinner at the church when he pulled out a handgun and started firing, killing three people ranging in age from 75 to 84. They say the gunman was restrained by another person before police arrived. The man has been arrested, though the motive, motive behind the shooting is still unknown. The FDA has approved the use of Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines in children as young as six months old. The FDA followed guidance from its advisory committee, finding the use both safe and effective. Both Moderna and Pfizer presented data showing any risks in using a lower dose COVID vaccine in children six months old or older was far outweighed by the benefits. Health officials do say the decision still needs the approval, though, from the CDC. Tonight, the White House is pushing back, trying to show that it's doing what it can to help the struggling economy that comes amid soaring fuel prices and this week's interest rate hike that is putting the mortgages out of reach for some Americans. Susan McGinnis reports people are dealing with an economic one-two punch. Recession fears are growing as Americans deal not only with rising prices, but now rising interest rates. It has Americans tightening their belts and Washington getting creative about how to try to help. As Americans head into a holiday weekend of grilling and chilling, sky-high inflation eating into their wallets. When I wake up in the morning, I start worrying about bills that need to be paid. The worries are warranted. Consumers digging into savings to make ends meet as salaries fail to keep pace with inflation. So we're out pretty early doing a couple orders to make some extra money. Extra money that's badly needed. Credit card debt is nearing a record high on top of stubborn gas prices. My feeling when pulling up to the gas station is anxiety, stress. To help, the White House reportedly considering sending rebate cards to millions. I'm using every lever available to me to bring down prices for the American people. The American people now facing rising borrowing costs on top of rising prices. Mortgage rates hitting a 13-year high, sparking fears the hoped-for soft landing for the economy will end up a crash landing into recession. The prospect taking a sledgehammer to Wall Street this week. <laughs> Stocks hitting their lowest level in more than a year. One Wall Street trader with some advice. Put together a shopping list. If you like long-term stories, now stocks are getting to a level where they're, they're uh, affordable for a long-term investment. A bright spot for investors in a dreary economy, if they have the stomach for it.
Economists warn expect inflation to remain high even as the economy slows. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, Local 4. All right, Susan, even amid fears of a possible recession, more Americans are working. The U.S. added 390,000 jobs in the month of May, higher than experts predicted.